Thank you. Tonight I want to speak about to Romans chapter 4. I've got a simple thought I want to give you tonight. Uh, as again, as we are preparing for revival. And uh, I have preached many, many, many revival. As a matter of fact, I'd like to ask you to pray uh, about me. Uh, I had a preacher contact me in West Virginia. I have not been back in nearly 14, 13, 14 years, I guess. It's been a long time since I've been back home. And uh, this church is probably hour, hour and 15 minutes before I was born and raised. And uh, he contacted me about some dates. I'm waiting to hear back from him and uh, up in West Virginia. And uh, so if you would please help us pray uh, that whatever the Lord wants to do will be fine by us. If he wants us to go, we'll go. If we don't, then will be fine. Uh, I would like my wife to go with me. I could show her where I was born and raised, and that would probably answer a whole lot of questions. I'm going to say it. And uh, it would explain a whole lot. And, uh, but anyway, help us pray about that meeting if you would. Uh, also, uh, I have an unspoken I'd like you to remember. Please, just some things I'm trying to get worked out, some things I'm trying to get done. I just need the mind of God and want to make sure I, I do it the way he wants it done and, and I follow his direction. So if you pray about that, I sure would appreciate it. Romans chapter number 8. Tonight I'm going to read one verse, although we'll be looking at many verses in this chapter. Look at Romans 8, look at verse number 8. For they that are after the flesh do mind the thing of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Let's pray. Our Father, Lord, tonight, I'm glad there's never been a day you've been less than anything uh, but perfect, holy, and righteous, and all powerful. I'm glad there's never been a day you've been anything less than faithful. Lord, I'm grateful for the good singing. Thank you for the sweet spirit of God. Father, tonight we are in desperate need of your help. Pray you anoint us and do us in power to give us that which we, we need to preach the word of God. Lord, I pray that you would drive this truth down in our hearts. Lord, as you prepare our minds and our hearts for revival. Lord, may you use the message uh, in the coming day. Lord, during revival. And Father, what do you do for us? We'll be careful to thank you and praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Here in Romans chapter number 8, the Lord gives us some insight into the ministry of the Holy Ghost in the life of the believer. The Spirit of God has a, a, a paramount role uh, in the life of the believer. And in Romans chapter number 8, the Lord uh, reveals some things to us about the Spirit of God's working and moving in our life. Tonight, uh, I, I'll be honest, I, I, I want to continue on with the message, but I just want to stop and say, man, I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. I'm telling you, here we are nearly 24 years later, and I'm still excited, and I'm still, uh, I still have joy in my heart just to stand and open my Bible and wear it back and preach. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, the new don't never wear off. Yeah. I'm glad that I don't ever get tired or weary or right. sick of getting up to preach. But listen, when I opened my Bible and started reading that text, something started bubbling up in my heart. And I thought, thank God, all these years He's been faithful. All these years uh, He's given us opportunity and open door after open door. And I still am free yeah. to stand and open my Bible Amen. and preach God's Word. Yeah. Now, listen, I, I, I'm not the greatest preacher. I'm not the, the most eloquent preacher. Uh, I, but listen, I am still enjoying uh, living for God. I'm still enjoying uh, preaching His book. And I still look forward to Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Right. I look forward to preaching revival. Every opportunity, every open door, even after all these years and after all those messages down through the years, uh, I still get excited about standing and preaching right. God's Word. I'm glad that the Spirit of God can make it real down in your heart. Yeah. You can still yeah. find joy in serving Him. Sure. Hey, it's, it ain't all drudgery. It ain't all uh, responsibility right. on the mission of duty. There's still joy in serving Jesus and fulfilling the will of God for your life. Right. Mm. I 
I just felt like I need to throw that in. Now, in Romans chapter number 8, <laughs> you'll find that the Lord uh, gives us some insight into the Spirit of God's working into our life and in the life of the believer. You will find in verse number 1, He deals with our walk. Look at verse 1. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Skip down to verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You will find twice he deals with the believer's walk. Hear me this, this evening. The Christian life is compared uh, uh, scripturally to a walk with the Spirit of God. The Bible says this, can two walk together except they be agreed. And so, Brother Aaron, if you would come here quickly. Uh, this is the way the Spirit of God uh, operates in the life of a believer. Uh, now listen, I know He lives inside of us, but for illustrative purposes, uh, this is the, the, the picture that the Bible paints of the believer uh, and the Christian life as he goes about raising his family, working his job, coming to church. Every step he takes, the Spirit of God is with him. He never leaves him. He never forsakes him. Even when they, they, he tries to pull away. Even when he tries to get away. Come on there and stay with me. Even when he tries to get away, uh, the Spirit of God hangs on to him. And hear me, uh, that's, a, that's a picture of what you and I do uh, uh, sometimes with the Lord. We like to go our own way. And we like to do our own thing. We've got our own ideas, our own plans, our own schemes, our own plots. And, and many times they go contrary to the Spirit of God. But ain't you glad tonight that even when we try to get away, the Spirit of God grabs us yeah. and says, come back yeah. over here. Yeah. I just said, that ain't where you need to go. You say, but I want to go that way. And the Spirit of God says, no, 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 no. And you come to church and they get up and get to singing and the Holy Ghost smites your heart and it gets you back in tune and gets you back in line so that you can walk with your God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's good. Now, so he deals with our walk and he talks about how we ought to walk after the Spirit. And we ought to walk with the Spirit. And we ought to be sensitive to the Spirit. Right. And so he deals with our walk. I ain't got time to get into that. I got to move on. Uh, because I'm going somewhere. And so you'll find first of all in verses 1 through verse 4, he deals with our walk. But secondly, you will find in Romans chapter number 8, he deals with the Spirit's work. Look at verse number 15. In verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You'll find, first of all, the work of the Spirit is to adopt us. And hear me, He's the, he's the agent that produces salvation. I understand we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. I understand it's by grace through faith. But do you know who it acts and acts out right. the, the work of salvation of uh, why Jesus is sitting on the throne? Some old sinner uh, comes walking in the back doors lost on their way to hell, right. sits down on one of our pews, uh, and all of a sudden, right. the Spirit of God. Uh, Brother Eric, come to the platform, please, quickly. And uh, uh, sit right there. Uh, Eric's going to be Jesus. I know it's a stretch, but stay with me. Uh, and so uh, here's what happens. They get up and start saying, and they begin to say, there's not a time. And all of a sudden, some sinner sitting there lost on their way to hell. The sweet Holy Ghost of God goes to that sinner and it grabs him. And he says, you know Jesus loves you. And you know Jesus died for you. And he believes it. And he says, you're right. And he says, you know you're going to hell. He says, you're right. He says, then come with me. And he takes that old rotten, wicked, dirty, rotten, nasty, filthy sinner and introduces him unto Jesus Christ. And Jesus yeah. saves him by his grace. And now everywhere that sinner goes, now the Spirit of God never leaves and never forsakes. I'm glad, thank God, the Holy Ghost got me in the faith. Amen. Amen. Got me in the faith. Amen. He adopts. You say, preacher, prove that. No, I'll give you a picture of it over in the book of Genesis. Abraham is looking for a bride for his son. Do you know what he does? He takes an unnamed servant. We find out later his name is Eliezer. But he sends him into the far country and says, go get a bride for my son. And so Eliezer makes the long journey into the far country and he finds the little old Rebecca. Rebecca's with her family and he begins to give her trinkets and he begins to give her things. You know what he's doing? He is wooing her. He is drawing her. He doesn't talk about himself. He talks about Isaac. He 
he talks about how great Isaac is. And he begins to brag on Isaac and talk about Isaac. And he says, now, will you go with me? And uh, she said, I'll go. He said, all right, come with me. And he, he uh, uh, starts that long journey toward the house. And every step of the way, uh, that unnamed servant is with her. When she got nervous, he was with her. When she got scared, he was with her. When she got hungry, he fed her. He protected her. He looked out for her. And finally, there come a day when the camels came home. And she came, he, she hops off that camel. And she says, right there he is. There's your husband. There's the man you're going to marry. And she runs and meets him. And uh, they embrace. Uh, and they get married by the grace of God. Hear me tonight. There is coming a day. Thank God. He wooed me. And he won me. And right now he's walking with me on the long journey home. But thank God there will come a day when he introduces me to the leader, the Savior, and says that is him. And thank God I will forever, forever, forever be with him. Amen. He's our heavenly bride, our heavenly groomsman. He is the groom. We are his bride. Amen. I'm grateful that he adopts. But you'll find secondly, not only does he adopt us, he cleans us up in verse 13. Chapter 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Yeah. But if ye, notice those next three words, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Amen. When you got saved, you still had a whole bunch of flaws. Yeah. Can I be honest? Some of us still got a whole yeah. bunch of flaws. Yeah. You say, preacher, you still got flaws. Yeah, but you should have seen me when he found me. Yeah. You think it's bad now, you should have seen me 25 years ago. Yeah. But through those years, this is what the Spirit of God does. He begins to work on and move and remove stuff out of our hearts, yeah. out of our lives. He begins to correct our conduct and our character. Right. He begins to deal with us and, and, and clean us up. Uh, you know why? He's trying to make us more like Jesus. Part of the Spirit's job is to uh, clean you up, make you more like the Savior, make you less like you and more like Him. Less like the world, more like Him. Uh, less carnal and more spiritual. And so He'll spend the rest of your life on this planet getting junk out of you and cleaning you up, straightening you out. You say, how does He do it? He uses problems and burdens and sorrows and heartaches and issues and uh, he uses all of those things uh, uh, to dig all that junk out of us and so that he can he can purify our hearts purify our life and purify our conduct and our character and so he works on us and he cleans us up he adopts us he cleans us up but he helps us pray look at verse 26 verse 26 likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities thank God for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself made an intercession yeah. for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints Amen. according to the will of God. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, God's, uh, I'm glad that the Lord ain't answered all my prayers. Yeah. Right. Can I be honest? Yeah. I prayed some stuff. Yeah, a few years would go by and I'd look back and say, thank God he didn't answer that. Yeah. Had he answered it, I'd have been in a mess for sure right yeah. now. And so listen, the Spirit of God has a ministry in the heart and life of the believer. And if you will try to walk with Him and walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh, if you will sincerely seek the will of God and, and be sensitive to the Spirit of God and walk after Him, you have some benefits that come along with being saved. And one of them, uh, the first thing that happens before you can ever get in is He adopts us. The second thing that happens is He cleans us up. The third thing that happens is He helps us pray. The, the last thing that will happen if we go by way of the grave, he will resurrect us according to verse number 11. I ain't got time to get there. I'm moving on. Uh, but you will find that uh, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that dwells in us and one day after a while if we go by the way of the grave, there's enough power in the spirit of God to take old dead dried up bones and raise them out of the dirt and put the flesh back on them and to resurrect them and give them life uh, uh, just like he did in the valley of dry bones and Ezekiel 37, but God has enough power to take something that's dead 
that are raising yeah. back to life. I'm glad all of those that have went on, all the funerals we've done as a church, all those we've laid to rest. Now listen, I'm glad one day we shall see them again because when Jesus comes, the sweet Holy Ghost will raise them back to life. Amen. What a blessing. So he deals with the walk. But then he deals with the work of the Spirit. But in verse number 16, he deals with the witness of the Spirit. Look at verse 16. In verse number 16, he says this. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. You know, I know I'm saved because the Spirit beareth witness with my spirit. Amen. Listen, the Lord confirms salvation in the heart and life of the believer. Yeah. Now listen, I understand we're saved by grace through faith. And we're saved because we do what the Bible said and we respond to the Spirit's call. I know that. But how do we know we're saved? Because the Spirit that lives inside of you confirms the fact right. that you are saved. Amen. So He deals with the witness of the Spirit. But I want to hunger down right there, but I better not. Let's move on. So you'll find he deals with these issues throughout Romans chapter number 8. I wish I had time. Honestly, we, we can make a series out of it just dealing with those three points. Uh, but, but honestly, this is, the, this is the thought that the Lord's burdened me with. And this is the thought I want, to, I want you to get tonight. And I want to be a help to you. Look at verse number 5. Verse number 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Yeah. Notice the next statement. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Tonight, here's the thought. Be mindful of the Spirit. Amen. Many times we are guilty of just coming to church without giving any thought or without giving any credence to what the Spirit of God is trying to do. Yeah. Tonight, we must be sensitive to the Spirit of God. There is no doubt in my mind that the Spirit of God will show up these coming right. days. There is no doubt Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning, that in some shape or form, the Spirit of God is going to show up. There yeah. is no doubt in my mind. Now, it is our responsibility as believers to make sure we don't do anything that would either grieve Him yeah. or quench Him. You will find in 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, 19, the Bible says this, that the Spirit of God can be quenched. That, you know how you quench the Spirit of God? By not doing what He tells you to do. For example, you know, they get up and get to saying the Lord gets to moving and the Spirit of God nudges you and says testify. And you refuse to testify. You know what you've done? You have quenched the Spirit of God. Right. You have hindered God's working and God's moving in the particular service. Uh, listen, then the Bible says this in Ephesians 4.30. Uh, and, gr and grieve not the Spirit of God. You know how you grieve the Spirit of God? By doing something you shouldn't be doing. And so listen, both are possible, especially in a revival meeting where God's blessing and God's moving. And we must be sensitive to the Spirit of God that we don't do anything that would hinder or grieve Him or quench Him from moving and blessing in, in, in the service. And so tonight, we must be mindful of the Spirit. Hear me tonight. Even tonight, I can feel the Spirit of God moving around. And, and listen, as believers, a lot of times we just come in and we try to soak it up and enjoy it. And you right. know, I, I'm not fussing. You ought to come try to soak it up. But listen, in the midst of soaking it up and enjoying it, we must be sensitive to the Spirit of God or of what He wants us to do. Listen, if the Spirit of God wants you to get up and go across the aisle and hug somebody's neck and tell them you love them, then you ought to do that. If the Spirit of God deals with you about going over here and apologizing to somebody, uh, then you ought to do that. If the Spirit of God deals with you about coming to the altar, many times we are sensitive. I, 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 we say, well, I don't want to mess up the service. Hear me tonight. I've said this repeatedly through the years. You can't mess up a plan if there ain't no plan. Right. We got no plan. Yeah. 
We, show, we got a general idea of what we're going to do, but we certainly want to give the Lord liberty to work and move as he sees fit. Hear me, Brother Mike has been around as, as long as I have. Uh, a lot, probably longer. Uh, he's way older than me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, uh, but listen, Brother Mike knows. And if the Spirit of God gets to moving and Brother Mike don't get to preach, he is not going to be offended. He is not going to be angry. He is not going to feel like, man, I missed out. No, he's been preaching long enough that if the Holy Ghost gets to moving around and he don't get to preach, he's not going to be offended. And so listen, if the, if the Spirit of God nudges you to do something, do it! Do it! Do it! Because if you don't, you will quench the Spirit of God and you may hinder somebody else from getting a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Alright? Be careful that you don't grieve the Spirit of God. That is by doing something that you shouldn't do. Can I be honest? I, I have only seen this just a handful of times here. Generally, I try to keep it beat back. I, I try not to allow it. Uh, but the Spirit of God gets you moving, and, and somebody testifies, and somebody else testifies, and then somebody else raises their hand and says, Can I testify? Some of y'all remember this. I've had people raise their hand and say, Can I testify? And I say, No. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. Because if I testify, they're going to kill the thing and break our dead. Yeah. Right. Right. I ain't going to lie. I never forget, I'm sitting right here, and the Spirit of God was moving, and folks were, were bragging on Jesus, and boy, God was a blessing. Somebody said, can I say something? I said, sure. They sit up and start saying, now you pray for my cousin. He's got a bad back. And he need... That ain't the time. That ain't the time. Right. And literally, I felt the Holy Ghost go. Because yeah. he was worried. Yeah. I'm bad enough to fight. I ain't going to run. I'm bad enough to fight. I pray and beg and plead with God to show up. When he does, you will run him off. Dear God, be careful. Be careful that you don't grieve the Spirit of God by doing something that you shouldn't do. Right. Be careful that you don't quench him right. by not doing something that you should do. Yeah. And so, listen, if we're going to have revival, real, genuine, Holy Ghost, heaven sent revival, and I believe God wants to send, bring it out of my mind, God wants to do something special this way. As a congregation, we must be sensitive yeah. to the Spirit of God, right. and we must be mindful of the Spirit's working in the service. Amen. So, Tonight, not only do we need to be sensitive, we need to be submissive. <coughs> we need to stay yielded. And, and listen, when you walk in the door, your mind ought to be, your mind and your heart ought to be set. Lord, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Right. Amen. Yeah. You tell me to raise my hand, I'll raise my hand. You tell me to go law or go law. You tell me to testify, I'll testify. You tell me to sit down and shut up, that's exactly what I'll do. Yeah. We've got to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And we ought to be submissive. Listen, it don't matter what I want. Right. It matters what the Lord wants. Can I be honest? This morning the Holy Ghost said, sing the youth choir. You know what I said? I ain't planning on singing the youth choir. No. You know what I said? Yes, sir. Because it ain't about what I want. It's about what the Spirit of God wants. God's trying to accomplish something. We must be mindful of the Spirit. When we walk in the church, whether it be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival meeting, whatever it is, we, we, uh, we must have a mindset of we've got to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. We've got to be submissive to the Spirit of God. And we've got to be willing to do whatever he tells us to do. Yeah. And so tonight, be sensitive. Can I say this, please? With all the kindness in my heart, please don't get up during the invitation. Please. Yeah. Stay seated during the invitation. There will be lost people in the building, there's no doubt. Please be sensitive. The service is not over when he says, let's all stand. Right. That's when the invitation starts. We want to be sensitive that we don't are, are walking by somebody doesn't distract them and hinder the Spirit of God from working and moving yeah. in their life. So please, during the invitation, please be sensitive. Don't get up and walk out during the invitation, okay? And somebody, and listen, you may distract somebody that the Lord is dealing with, and we want to avoid that. And it might be a, some backslider that God's ringing out, and when you walk by, they... they, they you, yeah. their, their attention is drawn to you and, 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 and you hinder the Lord hey, from working in, in their life. So please don't move during the invitation. Stay yeah. seated. Listen, generally the invitation around here do, does not last more than three verses. Now, I've been to some where they last 75 verses, yeah. but, but here they last three verses. You say, why? Because if the Spirit of God can't get you to the altar in the first two or three verses, the, the other 69 we're going to say ain't going to do it either. Right. And so, listen, I want the Spirit of God to do it. Listen, I've seen folks go to the altar just so they go so that they say, Lord, please let this invitation in. Amen. It took y'all a minute to get that. Yeah. My God, I'll go to the altar just, just to get this invitation over. But here, we, we want the Spirit of God to, to, to work and move. Yeah, We're not right. trying to pull and prime and, and try to get folks in the altar. I'm not going to do that. If the Spirit of God can't get you in the altar, 
me saying 79 verses of just as I am ain't going to do it. But hear me tonight. We also want to be sensitive that we don't do anything that would hinder the Spirit of God from moving Amen. in the service. Amen. Listen, saying amen is always right. Yeah. While that man's preaching, holler amen, help him, yeah. encourage him. You'll protect that sucker in the dirt. Amen. And uh, Mike's old, he can't, you know, I'm just saying, I'm kidding. But listen, say amen, get behind him, help him preach, encourage him as he preaches. And so hear me tonight, we've got to have the mind, uh, be, be, uh, be mindful of the spirit. And so tonight, I have been in a lot of meetings, my God, through the years, I cannot count all the revivals I preach. Are you still up there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I knew he was up there. Uh, but but I've, been through, I've been in a lot of meetings through the years. A lot. And uh, I've seen, been in some home dangers where the Lord showed up. Amen. And I've seen some of them get killed yeah. and, and grieve the Spirit of God oh, yeah. and quench the Spirit of God. Yeah. And that meeting that, that could have, I mean, folks could have been, folks are getting saved and God's blessing. I've seen that thing go. And it died. Can I be honest? Back in January, we had some folks say one Sunday morning, some fellow walks up here and says, Can I say something? I said, No, sir, we're right in the middle of a flipping invitation. Right. Why would I let you say something right in the middle of the invitation? Now ain't the time to testify. Right. Right. I said, Sam. <laughs> so we sat down, and y'all know the rest of the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Walked up in the middle of the invitation. Can I say something? No. No, you can't. We're giving an invitation, sir. Right. Folks are in the altar trying to get saved. Why would you want to testify right then? Yeah, that's right. Can I be honest? Some folks the devil uses. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So, listen, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not. But listen, you've got folks who have fasted and prayed and begged right. God to move. When he does, we don't want you to kill it. Right. 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 So if that means you've got to hurt your feelings, I'd much rather hurt yours than hurt his. That's right. Yeah. 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 Somebody raise your hand. Can I testify? No. No. Generally, it's fine. We ain't got nobody in here looking like that. But we got some, dear God, man. My, my truck's got a parking brake on it. You want to bring it to a screeching hall, you got to do is yank the brake. I know some folks in churches that are like parking brake. Right. They will bring it to a screeching hall. Now, none of, nobody's sitting here tonight. So, but listen, if the Lord nudges you to testify, please do. We want you to. We want you to testify. You know how the Great Welsh Revival started? You've heard me tell the story a hundred times. A little nine-year-old girl in the middle of the meeting stood up and said, Can I say something? They said, Yep, yeah, honey, go ahead. She said, Oh, how I do love Jesus. When she said it, the Holy Ghost fell. And for almost a year, that thing broke out. Over 100,000 people were saved. You know, it started with a nine-year-old girl saying, Oh, how I do love Jesus. Amen. So listen, I, all I'm saying is this. Be sensitive. And, and be submissive. If the Lord deals with you about testifying, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is wonderful. Help yourself. You ain't going to hurt nothing. But let me say this. When you testify, don't talk about your problems. Right. That ain't a testimony. That's a complaint. That's right. Well, let's see. Well, my dog went blind. I had two toes cut off in a lawnmower accident. <laughs> Got attacked by a squirrel. But the Lord's good. And then say that. Come on, man. You spent 20 minutes bragging on the devil. And nine seconds bragging on the Lord. Listen. You say, well, I got problems. I want everybody to know it. Listen, we can't do nothing about it. And by the way, we all got problems too. That's right. So be, be mindful of what you say when you say it. All right? Listen, brag on Jesus. Talk about how good the Lord is. And listen, if all we talk about is our problems, you know what's going to happen? Yeah. The Spirit of God will withdraw. Yeah. I say in all of this to say this. Be sensitive. Be yeah. mindful of the Spirit's working. Be submissive. Make up your mind now. Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Yeah. Right. If the Lord, if, not that the Lord would. But if the Lord told me to stand on my head and cluck like a chicken, that's exactly what I'd do. I, I, I want to be so submissive to the Spirit of God. Whatever He tells me to do, I'll do it. If the Lord tells me uh, to to uh, go get somebody and, and say, come on, let's go pray, that's exactly what I want to do. I don't want to do anything that would hinder God from blessing and moving, saving sinners, drawing prodigals back, or working in the hearts and lives of the saints. Yeah. So, I said all that, I'm done. Listen, be sensitive 
and be submissive to the Spirit of God. We need Him. We need Him. So, if you'll follow the Spirit of God, everything will turn out wonderful. I'm not talking about wildfire and a bunch of nonsense, but what I am talking about is being sensitive to the Spirit of God and not grieving Him by doing something we shouldn't, nor quenching Him by failing to do something that we should have done. And listen, I've had people tell me this. Preacher, I, uh, the other night people were testifying and I wouldn't do it. And I walked out and God beat me up all the way home. You know? Don't you don't want to leave a meeting like that. Right. Be sensitive. Be submissive. Make up your mind you're going to do what God says, whatever God tells you to do. God tells you to shout, shout. As long as you do it in English, I don't mind. Shout, okay. shout. Okay. Listen, if God tells you to go to the altar, go to the altar. If He tells you to go pray, if He tells you to go back in the back and get somebody by the hand and say, hey, you want to go to the altar and pray with me, uh, then, then do that. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. But be sensitive to the Spirit of God right. and let Him have His way in our church. Okay? Yes. That's the only way to have a real, genuine revival. I made up my mind many, many years ago, and it's still true today. Whatever the Lord tells me to do, it's what I'll do. Uh, if the Lord wants me to rear back and preach on something else, uh, 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 if the Lord wants me to preach on soda cans, that's what I've preached on tonight. Uh, you, you ought to be submissive and say, listen, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to go to the altar. I might mess something up. Again, we have no plan. Yeah. You go on to the altar. It will not be a problem. Yeah. All right? As a matter of fact, the Lord might nudge you to go to the altar, and when you go, it may encourage somebody else yeah, to go. Right. And so be sensitive. Just be sensitive and do what the Lord tells you to do. Be submissive. Let the Lord have His way. Make up your mind when you walk in those doors Wednesday night. Lord, whatever you want to do, uh, I'm in. I'm in. Amen. You say, well, if the Lord would tell me what to do, then I, no, no, no. I'm going to go ahead and get in, even if I don't know what He's going to tell me. You'll never go wrong listening to the Spirit. So, be sensitive and be submissive to the Spirit of God uh, as we start revival. Be, be mindful of the Spirit's movement. All right? Be sensitive of the Spirit's movement. All right? We don't want to do anything to hinder, hurt, or kill the meeting. All right? All right. Let's all stand. Father, I want you to know I love you. I thank you. And I praise you. I give you honor and glory. Thank you for the sweet Spirit of God that resides in my heart. Thank you for the sweet spirit of God that, are, that we have felt tonight. Thank you for these dear people. Lord, there, I, 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 Lord there's not a one of them that's ever hindered or hurt a service in almost 16 years. Not a one. Lord, we have had some folks who have hindered and hurt the service, but ain't none of them here. Lord, I want to thank you for your people that have wisdom and they have understanding and discernment. Lord, help us to be hypersensitive to the Spirit of God. Help us to be mindful of the Spirit's moving and working, whether it be in our life or in the life of someone else on the pew next to us. God, help us to be obedient and do exactly what you tell us to do. Father, our prayer is that you would meet with us in power and great glory. May the Spirit of God walk up and down each and every aisle. May you, may you speak unto hearts of your people. May you encourage, restore, refresh, and revive us. Father, may you bring sinners and plant them on the pew. Lord, may the Spirit of God begin to work and move in their lives. May you draw them to the Savior and save them by your grace. May you bring prodigals. Lord, may they come home. May you, may you help them to realize they're in the hog pen. May, may you draw them back to the Father's house. Lord, may you save sinners. May you draw prodigals. May you help and encourage the saint that's struggling. Lord, those that are carrying heavy burdens, may you do a work of grace in their hearts and in their lives. Father, tonight, may you help us to be mindful of the Spirit and its working and its moving in the, in the services that are to come. May you bless revival meeting. May you touch the singers. May you touch Preacher Mike. May you bless in power and glory. May you get all the honor, all the glory. May you be uplifted and magnified and glorified and more uplifted. Lord, may you bless this revival meeting. May you help us. May you burden us in these next couple of days. Lord, that we pray and beg for your power, beg for your blessing. May you burden us to, to invite folks to come, uh, especially on that Friday night. May, we, may you burden us to invite sinners and prodigals back. Lord, may you work and move in their lives. God, may you help us to be mindful of the Spirit during the service. Father, what do you do for us? We'll thank you, we'll praise you, give you honor and glory. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right. All hearts and minds clear tonight. And Brother Robin, if you want to dismiss me. Lord God, we love you. Thank you for another day, Lord. Yes, you uh, help us to have a good uh, Memorial Day tomorrow, Lord. We have a fellowship with family. We're praying for Lord, we ask you to come into our, uh, our Bible, Lord, that you just encourage us, Lord, to try to invite others, Lord, to come here to preach the Lord. And we ask that you just help us to be a blessing to our church, to our, to our community, Lord, help us be a testimony.